Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and of course, a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gard, your host. I'm a law professor at Tulane University Law School. I also hold two fellowships right now, one at the Business School and one at the Newcomb um, Institute at Tulane. And I just want a quilt. So today we talked to Juan Bourbon. He is a hobbyist 3D printer who is making us um, those little um, bias tape um, 3D printed uh, plastic things to make the ties faster. Um, he's working with wehavemass.org, which is um, we've interviewed last week, and they are amazing. And we talk with him about 3D printing. My name is Juan, and I'm calling from Metairie, which is right outside of New Orleans. Right outside of New Orleans. Yes. Um, it's our suburb, kind of, right? Would you say that? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Metairie may not like that idea. They like their own thing. It's um, pretty suburby. Very suburby. Um, okay, tell me your first memory of someone sewing or quilting in your life. Uh, probably that would be uh, one of my aunts um, who just loved to get her hands on whatever she could and uh, make any alterations. Um, very crafty person. Love it. Um, and then tell me a little bit about what you've been doing. And I have a little device in my hand, which is tell me what you made and how you made it. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I would consider myself a maker, uh, just someone that likes to tinker with all sorts of stuff. Um, specifically, one of my hobbies is 3D printing. So uh, when I saw uh, someone post about uh, a need to make uh, these um, bias tools for sewing masks uh, that could be 3D printed, um, I, uh, yeah, I was happy to uh, help out in whatever That's capacity. So, cool. so I, have a, I love it. And you yeah, gave us I have a you gave... that has been printing um, about four every half hour, and I just have it running while I work from home. That is so amazing. Um, and you gave us some yesterday, which was so great, and we're going to get these out to people. Um, tell me a little bit about where you got th- So for those that don't understand, what is 3D printing exactly? How does it work? Help us understand that part of it. Sure. Um, so 3D printing has been around for quite a while now, but uh, what has changed in the last few years is how accessible it has become. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, similar to how sewing machines are now widely available, like anyone can go to a store and buy one. Um, 3D printing is starting to get to that level of accessibility where you can buy machines for like as low as like $200 now and uh, get started. So um, they uh, essentially work by um, adding material a layer at a time um, and you go layer by layer until you uh, build your part. Very interesting. And so help us understand sort of as a hobby sort of how much, like if you were going to get a 3D, like, so this is a hard question. So if you're going to get a sewing machine, you can get one for $100, but a lot of us buy them at like $800 or $2,000 or $5,000, right? Like, like we we want a really good one, right? Tell us a little bit about like, if you're in the market for a 3D printer, like how much is it? Like, what are you really looking for in terms of features? Like, like how do you get into this hobby and where do you start? No. That is a big question. I know it's a big Um, question. That's what I was saying. It's really hard. You know, a lot of people are buying these $100 sewing machines and they're fine. But like the mm -hmm. serious seller is going to start with like a $1,000 machine, right? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I could understand that. So yeah, first of all, um, the most important thing is to clarify your goals, right? Like if you just want to dip your toes into the 3D printing as a hobby. Yeah. Uh, you can start with a cheaper machine and uh, and do some exploration there. And as you learn what you like and what your goals are in developing a hobby, then you can invest in some higher end machines. Yeah. Um, and it also kind of depends on what 
you what the hobby means to you. Uh, for example, I, I have built some 3D printers from scratch in the wow. past and cool. I've just enjoyed that process. So like uh -huh. uh, sometimes like just having a machine that like requires a little bit of more involved maintenance and tweaking is totally fine with me. So like I, uh, for like the machine that I have is I bought for about $200. Uh -huh. um, so it's not a high end machine, but um, when when it does break down, <laughs> I uh, I kind of enjoy working on it. Um, but Very there's definitely uh, the maker who just wants something that works out of the box, right. and um, and there's definitely options for that, and companies that make very high end products that have uh, well supported. Um, service models yeah. and good warranties so right. it's a whole spectrum and lots of possibilities there interesting and then what is it cost like how much is the supplies what do the supplies look like exactly for a 3d printer are they are they liquid like what's going into the 3d printer to make the thing that you made us a bias tape like a for ties um what's going mm -hmm. in what's going into the machine well, it, uh, it depends on the type of machine. So there's actually a couple different um, 3D printing technologies. Um, the two main technologies that are available at, for regular consumers nowadays are um, FDM, uh, which is fused deposition modeling, and SLA. Um, and FDM is probably the most popular type and that uses um, a plastic filament. So um, kind of like when you get the weed whacker from your department store, um, it looks like that. It's like a spool of plastic. Oh, and what the 3D printer does is that it uh, extrudes the plastic through a nozzle, very similar to how a hot glue gun works. Uh, it heats it up and then it comes out as melted plastic uh, at the tip of the nozzle, and then it, uh, you know, gradually depositions the plastic layer by layer until you have a part. Um, that also, as material goes, it kind of depends on the kind of plastic that you use. Um, there's plastics like PLA, ABS, um, and they all have different properties. Um, I print with PLA, which is about maybe 20 to 30 bucks per kilogram of plastic um and that goes a long way how much okay so you're making the, okay so the next so how many do you think you make of that for like 30 bucks how much are you making of the little bias tape things do you think oh that's a good question um let me see okay there <laughs> It's very cheap. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure one of those cost me maybe a few cents yeah. uh, in material. Um, let me, so I think one of them is two grams of plastic. Okay. So I can make 500. Wow. For 30 bucks. Full. Yeah. Um, plus your, plus the you know, you're now. Do you have to do anything when you? So, like, is it just running and spitting them out, or do you have to like do stuff to make them? Um, yeah, there's a little bit of setup. Uh, I'm printing four at a time, so um, basically every half hour when the job is done, um, I walk up to the printer, I unload the ones that it's made, and then I press a button, and it makes four. Got it. Okay. Um, so yeah. I have questions. I'm an intellectual property professor, so I'm curious where you got the file. Um, tell me a little bit. I imagine it's open. Is it? Tell me a little bit about the sort of the process of what the file is, how it works, where you got it, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, oh man, 3D printing has some very interesting implications as far as intellectual property and the distribution of files that. Um, have you know the information in them to produce physical goods and what that means um yeah. so this file came from uh, thingiverse which is a website um, that hosts a library of 3d printable objects that 
a community of people contribute to. And um, most of the files are going to be licensed under different types. Um, there's like uh, all right, so I'm no, at thingy, Thingiverse right now. And you can yeah. go, so let's say you've got a 3D printer, you go here, like, oh, they've got the little, um, the things that go to help you put the masks on the back, you know, the straps. So I'm looking at that, surgical mask straps, meat remix. And then what do I do from here? I see, oh, it's got a license, it's got a CC license. So it said that it's got an attribution, mm -hmm. right? So I guess you check the licensing and then you download the, are these usually for free or are people making money off of the files? Um, most of them you can freely download. Um, now, Thingiverse is a platform where it's uh, it's built around that that sharing um, culture right. of a, of a community of people that um, sort of share files and people build on each other's ideas yeah. uh, to create better versions of the different concepts that are out there. Yeah. Uh, there are other websites that have um, different models. Yeah. So uh, for example, there's a website called um, Shapeways where as a creator, I can upload a design and then make it available through that website uh -huh. so that if you, for example, want a, an object that I've designed, you can order it through that site and they actually take care of the printing and the shipping. Interesting. And, um, you know, they make some money on the production and I could make a margin on that as a creator. Interesting. Um, Very interesting. So different websites um, handle that in different ways. Very interesting. Um, and do you, um, okay, so you got the, the um, file from Thingy, Thingiverse. And then what happens? So mm -hmm. you saw the post and the people needed them and you downloaded it. And then did you have, do you have to do very much once you get the, once you get the file, do you have to do very much to make uh, it To get it printed, not really. Um, some of the, uh, the printing software um, that is used to take the model and slice it up into instructions that the machine on um, those have gotten very sophisticated and very user friendly uh, throughout the years. So um, I was able to just load it up and prepare my file and send it to the printer and it started to print. Um, but I also tweaked some of the settings so that I could produce uh, the, the parts in, in a more rapid way. Um, so Very like, I think, I think the, the standard settings were just going to print the file, like one of them in 15 minutes. And then yeah. I took some settings so that I could print four in half an hour. Interesting. I like it. Very nice. Um, now I'm here and I'm looking and I'm like, there's so many fun things you can make. It's so cool. Oh, yeah. Um, totally. How interesting. Um, and how much do you sort of use other people's patterns of things or do you make your own files kind of as a hobbyist? Like what kind, what's your kind of thing that you like to do besides making bias tape um, <laughs> and having these for the quilters <laughs> and the sewers? Sure. Um, mostly I use it to make uh, tooling. Um, so like maybe some holders for some of my tools, um, some brackets for whatever I might be building. Um, yeah, I would say mostly functional parts yeah. that don't need to be like super strong and plastic would be fine for. Very interesting. Um, I would use them, but I mean, people use them for all sorts of stuff. Um, all such stuff. A lot of people like to use them uh, to print like miniature figurines so that they yes, can use I've them. Yes, I've seen this. Thing. This is insane. Uh, I've seen all artwork. of these. Yeah. So yeah. It's amazing. Seriously. Very interesting. Um, okay. So, um, so you're making these. Where are you? What are you doing with them once you make them? Uh, like the, the bias yeah. tape uh, gadgets yeah. that you're holding. Uh -huh. um, 
So um, I've been in contact with uh, you know this organization that um, is gonna work to distribute them to people that are making masks yeah. around um, you know around the country. Um, so I am about to make a shipment of the ones that I've produced uh, so that they can distribute them. But uh, also just yesterday, someone uh, that's local from New Orleans uh, came by and I just left some in my driveway so they could pick it up and we could yeah. still observe some sort of distancing there. So, that's so great. Um, yeah, I hope that these make their way to, uh, to people that are gonna make some masks out there and hopefully make them more productive while they're doing it. I love it. I totally, totally love it. Well, this is just so insanely cool. I really do appreciate this. Um, and uh, what's the feedback been on these? I used one last night. It was great. So have you had people, are they, have you heard from back from the sewing community on the, what you've been making? Actually, you're the first one to use them. Really? <laughs> oh, that's so yeah. great. Um, I've been mostly um, just uh cranking them out and, uh, and uh -huh. building, you know, a small sort of inventory. So then I can just send a big batch. Yeah. And, and get them distributed. But uh, yeah, totally uh, I mean, enough. before I printed a bunch, um, uh, the design was verified, like someone tried them yeah. and made sure that before Very I just cool. made a bunch. And, I love yeah. it. And do you know how big the, um, the, uh, the, the fabric should be? Is it an inch and a half or an inch that should be going through this thing? Uh, those are for an inch and a half yeah, or so four centimeters. Awesome. This is so great. I totally, totally love it. Um, this, well, thank you so much for helping us and being part of this. I mean, it does really take a village, and these uh, help people make the bite. The, the ties are the worst part, I have to tell you. Like, everything mm -hmm. else goes really fast, but the ties are really annoying, um, having made, like, a lot of masks. So this is really appreciated, and it's so nice um, for different communities coming together um, all to help um, with all of this, you know? It's great. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, of course, there's, like, a lot of negativity surrounding, you know, every, with everything that's going on, but it's also really inspiring to see how yeah. people are coming together and coming up with creative solutions um, to solve the, the new types of problems that we're facing now. And uh, yeah, specifically like like this interaction that we're having right now, like I'm definitely, uh, like we're both makers, like yeah. in our respective ways. Um, Usually, that's right. You're uh, a textile maker. I work with more like techie stuff. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, through this, we've kind of, we've had an opportunity to uh, collaborate. And that's right. I've been learning more about how it's so great, uh, right? different Excel tools work and uh, yeah. it's becoming this kind of exchange. So it's been really cool. I just love it. Uh, this is so great. Well, will you, um, are you okay, okay with us posting this? And if people um, hear this, can they reach out to you to get them? Or how do, if they hear you, like how do they, how do they find these if they are interested in them? Um, yeah, let me... That make me nervous. I can send you a, a link to okay. the site of the organization that's gonna awesome. handle the distribution. And what, um, uh, what, what organization are you working with? It is, <laughs> see I've been talking to uh, Becky who helps organize it, but I need to look oh. up that. Is it um, wehavemasks.org? Yes. yes. They are amazing, them. that's so great. Yeah, we interviewed them. They're amazing. They're amazing. They're so, seriously amazing. Yeah, that'll be great. Right, they've, they've donated over 10,000 masks already, and they're working with um, military families and, like, all kinds of craziness. They're just, like, they're this um, incredibly entrepreneurial group. Um, and uh, that's great that you're working with them. That's fantastic. It's, that's great. Yeah. All right, I so... Think it, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I think it just helps a lot of people. Like, I mean, of course, we need masks for um our frontline workers but also like giving people something to do um while they're at home uh is also really nice um so it's uh yeah it's been helping in, in many aspects for sure yeah totally um all right well fabulous well um you okay with us posting this 
Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, hold on just a second. Um, all right, cool. Um, and then how do you how do you say your last name? I want to make sure that I get it right. It's a uh, uh, B O R B O N uh, okay. Bourbon. Bourbon. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks so much for uh, chatting with us. This is so cool. Hold on. So you've been listening to Just Wanna Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, and I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gar. If you like this podcast, keep listening. Also, we have a Facebook group. Come join us. We talk about a lot of things. We also have an Instagram account. And of course, most importantly, I really hope you get a chance to quilt today. 